for me, both of these guys, um, whilst you know maybe they they do have some of these you know their own insecurities, and you know we might look at at Tower as being you know Jeremiah Tower is maybe being lonely, and he does make some comment about there is there is a part of his life that is a loneliness, but they also seem to have followed a very authentic path and they seem to have continually been looking for that. And so that's the, that's the, the thing we want to take on here is, is, is that authentic path. And then so what comes with that authentic path? Uh, I think one of, the, one of the standouts is not just, um, not just getting behind what it is that you're doing but actually saying no to opportunities or saying no to situations, saying no to other people and then getting people offside. I think is the the real resonating fact of uh, of both of those documentaries for me, mate. Um, because you can't you can't do everything, and so I think there's a real brave commitment that's come from the likes of these these guys to say, "Hang on, I know that this is this is the thing that I want to commit to. This is the thing that I want to, you know, be involved with," and so that they jump into it. 110 percent you know and i think that's what's really fascinating there's a big leap that happens for these types of types of people it's an interesting point so effectively you're saying that it's as much about what you don't do as what you do do Mm. i think that's exactly right right and and this this probably is somewhat contrary to our conversations we've had around range for example um can't even recall what episode number that that we spoke about that book but there's there's been quite a few conversations around the the idea of the generalist and to some degree i actually still think that these guys are are generalists because they're quite worldly they're quite knowledgeable about many different things it's just that they are very much experts in their domain very much experts in this one particular thing. And so that really shone, shone to me. So in what way does saying no allow them to be that expert or find, because we're technically talking about two people who found a lot of new, Jeremiah in particular seems to be someone who's found a lot of new things or created a lot of new things. And perhaps Molman is too, but probably maybe slightly differently. What way does saying no allow you to be creative? Yeah, I, and I think I think maybe part of part of the no is let's let's also expand that slightly to being disagreeable. So not just agreeable, <laughs> yeah. you know. So being disagreeable and saying no, but it's not just saying no for the sake of saying no. Typically, these is these are, they're saying no for the pursuit of a vision. Because I think both of these guys are quite visionary. They've got they 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 see something in the distance and they want to go for it. They want to chase it and and track it down. And so a lot of their you know you see that in stars when he created stars and the vision that he had and wanted to to build out of that. I think you see that for why he failed at the tavern. Um, you know we're talking about. Jeremiah Tower here, obviously, uh, the tavern. I just don't think there was sufficient time and I don't think there was sufficient um, backing behind the vision that he wanted to create at that place. You know, again, I know very little, but that's my hunch um, about what that situation was. You look, you see Melman doing the same thing. He he won that, the award. I can't recall what the award name is. Um, he won an award that he had to fly to Germany for. Uh, and to accept and it's a prestigious award it's the white tablecloths it's the big high chef's hats and all this stuff and this was after he'd had a you know a realization that he was um he was becoming one of those like obnoxious arrogant chefs and so he'd already had this internal you know um awakening happen and he decided that he was going to um basically completely changed the approach which people were taking at these uh these are this big cook-up event so the chefs normally come in they you know they put on this multi-course dinner service for all these you know 
all these well-to-do people and um you know it's a big event he receives an award and and you know they're all they're all happy happy and wait till next year for the next one what he did was um he decided that instead of candles and fancy, you know, all these fancy plates and cutlery and everything else, he's going to throw, he's going to take across, um, I can't remember how many tons it was, but it was tons of potatoes and just throw them on the tables. And then obviously, you know, that's the, the not only a presentation item, but they're actually going to cook with those potatoes. So they, they're really bringing this like authentic, you know, ingredient from South America across to Germany as part of this award. And it was a real kind of storytelling thing. But the, um, I can't remember what the name of the person is that runs the restaurant. You can imagine a pile of, you can imagine a pile of potatoes on this table. And they weren't washed. A huge pile of potatoes. And then everything in the meals was made out of potatoes. Yeah. And is it the maitre d' or something? Anyway, the the whoever runs this this hotel and runs the event were just like, you cannot do this. You know, this is like absolute blasphemy. So they brought the potatoes, like they smuggled these potatoes in in all their suitcases and things because his team came across as well and and basically, you know, um, did it anyway and just forced you know forced their way through to create this thing and end up being a you know a huge spectacular event and so. They're able, to, you know, these types of people are able to be disagreeable in pursuit of their vision. 